Hey, Summer of Magic folks, how are you today on this Wednesday? Woo woo Wednesday! How is everyone doing on this fabulous day? We're going to wait for some people to come in to jump in and say hello. So while you're here, just hang out. Get to know me. Hang out. We're going to be here for a little bit of um, time together in sacred space. So yay, yay for that. If you are here, give me some hearts up, some thumbs up, some hey, what's up, which is what's going on. Let me know that you are here in the wonderful Summer of Magic Summit that is going on. I am enjoying this summit and I have a drink so you will see me drink I'm in Austin Texas <clears throat> it is hot as hell <laughs> so we have to stay hydrated right so welcome everyone if you're here say hello say what's up what is going on I'm gonna pull you guys up on my phone because Facebook is wonky sometimes and doesn't show me the comments sometimes so let me pull you up so I can see the comments at least. Make sure we're live. Hopefully I can start the comments. I got seven comments already and Facebook hasn't even showed me one. So yay, Facebook! <laughs> so I will see if I can catch them on my um, phone and try to answer them. Um, so hello Ellen, Ellen is here. If you see me looking to the side, I'm looking at my phone. Hello Jessica, thank y'all for joining. And Rolly's here, hello my witchy sister, Christina, loud and clear, awesome, yay, good. Elizabeth's here, hi Elizabeth, thank y'all for joining me. And oh my gosh, I need some glasses, better glasses, right? Dane Cole, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, I am so sorry, and it's not showing me, um, the comments on Facebook, but that's okay. We'll make it work, right? So we're hanging out a little bit. It is 2.03, so we're just going to hang out, say hello. Are you guys enjoying the summit so far? Yeah? Yeah? Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're enjoying the summit. I am so excited to be here and so thankful for Christina to offering up her Facebook group to let us connect with you guys and share our expertise. And we have a whole week-long summit of talking about the gods and goddesses. So I'm so thankful that she has offered this space to us to connect to you, to share our gifts, to talk about the god and goddesses. Anytime we have a chance to do that, I'm all, always up for it. So super, super cool. I'm reading the comments. Yeah, Ellen's um, in Austin, too. So she's like, I second that. I need some sweet tea, right? <laughs> hey, Mario. Hey, Mario is one of our presenters also. He did a really super, super cool job. Say hi to your puggy for me. <laughs> Jessica's here and Diane, or Dane's here. Hey, hey, hey. Danny, Danny, I got it, Danny. I'm horrible with names. I butcher people's names. So let's go ahead and get started. My name if you don't know me, um, I am Madam Z and I'm a magical life coach. So that means that I empower females coming out of the witchy broom closet by teaching them more magical and mystical courses, metaphysical classes, witchcraft 101. Um, I am a third degree high priestess. I am a master tarot counselor, which means that I read tarot, but not like the, the normal, let's tell your future tarot, <laughs> right? It's more of a counseling session with me. So I'm a master tarot counselor. I have been reading tarot for many, many years. And I am a full moon, new moon, and circle leader facilitator and also a retreat leader a witchy retreat leader that is coming up in october so yay so i'm everything witchy and i love love teaching women who are new to witchcraft new to magic new to spell casting new to witchcrafting how to embody that and how to change their circumstances so it's it's funny because i always say when you work with me the side benefit is being witchy is you get to be more powerful. <laughs> so you get to change your whole, your whole circumstance with life. 
So that's the side benefit of working with me. You're like, oh, I'm done with my three month coaching, but I learned all about witching. But on the other side, I set clear boundaries, stood up to my boss, changed my life, set no to this. I'm not going to deal with this. And so you're like, I didn't know. <laughs> super, super fun. So welcome, welcome to the summit. I'm so excited to be here. Um, in the description, in the link, you should see all kinds of links and descriptions in there. So um, if you want to find me, I'm all around, all around here. Roundaway girl is what we used to say in the old days. And um, so you, you can find me. I'm, I'm around. Um, first thing we're going to, I want to talk about a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, you can grab my freebie here. And there's a link to grab my freebie. It's a wonderful freebie. And at the end of the live, make sure you stay tuned because I will be giving away a free 30-minute witchy coaching session with the winner of the group in my live feed. And there will be a question that you have to answer at the end of the live feed in order to, for you to be eligible to win my 30-minute free coaching package free gift to you to um, if you win. So make sure you stay for the end of the live feed so you will know what the question is and you can post your answers. Okay. So, okay. So let's get started. Let me catch up on some comments if we have any. I think they're coming through. Finally coming. Oh, no. So um, we are going to talk about today the goddess Bridget. Does anybody here know about the goddess Bridget or work with the goddess Bridget? No, I'm going to be doing um, how to bring, talk about how to bring in goddess Bridget into your everyday witchy world. But I'm also going to do a guided meditation with her. So at the end of looking at her history, her history, her history, where she came from, what she um, symbols, we're going to talk about how to use and bring her into your life every day. It doesn't have to be some elaborate thing. And we're going to talk about her healing, her power, how to work with her. And at the end, we're going to do a guided meditation with her. So we're going to do a little bit of walking with the goddess. Okay, so get comfy. Go grab a drink if you need to. We're going to be doing some sacred work today, some meditation, receiving messages from the goddess as I do a guided meditation for you. So first of all, let's talk about who and what Bridget is. Catching up on comments. Yes, Jessica, you're correct. She is Celtic. Celtic. She is a well-known Celtic goddess. She is, as I sit back, because I'm going to lean back and talk to you all, <laughs> I have my notes here. So it's a free flow kind of thing. I have notes, but if the goddess takes me off in some other tangent, we're going to go there. Um, just a little bit of history about me before we get started with the Bridget and to do the walk, because I believe she um, deserves more of our attention. I started off as in the Catholic Church, and we're going to tie this together at the end because I'm going to show you some symbols that I have, and you're going to be like, why do you have the rosary? You're you're pagan, what? but I'm going to tie it all together, so just hold tight. Hold tight. <laughs> hold on to your witch's hat. We'll get there. So I started off my life as being a Christian, and I was very much heavily into the um, Catholic Church. Well, what happened with that is the further I developed into my goddess and studies and earth-based studies, I found that the church was not offering to me and my soul what I needed. I was always questioning. It never resonated with me. I was always looking at the outside of the, you know, the windows of the stained glass windows watching all the birds and hearing all the, the, the trees rustle. And I was like, I know there's more to life, right? Than what the church is telling me. Cause I've never felt that I was 
ever made of sin. Um, I've never felt that I always had to prove myself to be worthy. And I always was like, you're missing an important part of the spiritual path of learning how powerful women were. And I always miss the puzzle piece of living your most powerful life, being accountable for your actions and not being um, like shamed. And I'm like, where's the goddess story in the whole thing? You always talk about men. You always talk about being subservient. You always talk about women in this background. They're not allowed to come forward. They're not allowed to speak your voice. Their voices are be heard. They can't uh, back. Well, I don't even know if it is nowadays because I haven't been in the Catholic Church for a long time. But I think it still is now. I guess it depends on the what type of church. But they're not even women are not even allowed to be preachers. They're not even allowed to lead churches. Um, only men hold that that um, title in that position. So at that point, I walked out of church. I was like, "This is not for me. I can't do this. You're not representing me and my soul and who I am." And I'm very connected with the Celtic um, pantheon, okay? And so that's how I started off many, many years ago before the internet, before any of this. Um, I started Wiccan. And now I'm more eclectic witch than I am Wiccan because um, Wiccan is just, it still has too many rules for me at that time. So I just like, I'm going to start off Wiccan. And then I was like, I want to do my own thing. I don't want any rules <laughs> in my life, right? Can anybody relate to not having any rules in your life, right? So like, I don't want any rules. So that is how I started off on my path. And that is how I teach women who are coming out of that and what I call coming out of the broom closet because they need support. They need help. They have this um, Christian religious wound that needs to be healed. Um, so that is why I left. That's just a little bit of story about me. And the first goddess who came to me during my spiritual awakening or path in goddess work was Bridget. And she is the goddess of flame and of the well. She's a Celtic goddess, the most wonderful deities and pagan goddesses that were worshipped by the Celtic and goddess, um, Irish people. Sorry. Her name means exalted one. She is um, a wonderful goddess to work with for healing. And she's also known as a warrior goddess, and we'll get more into that. And also um, a goddess of the flame, which means getting ignited and getting um, passionate about what you do, having strength to move forward. Let me catch up on comments. Hey, Pamela, thank you for being here. So she belongs to the ancient tribe of gods called Tuatha Dei Danann, and um, or Tuatha Dei, ancient, ancient tribe of gods. <clears throat> She is commonly celebrated by the Wiccans, right? Modern day witchcraft or Wiccan as the maiden of triple goddess. She is maiden mother crone, okay? But traditionally, she was usually um, triple goddess, but connected to the three cycles of the earth. Her festival is held on February 6th, sorry, 2nd, February 2nd, which is Imbol. And it is a cross quarter and it is highly regarded as a springtime awakening whereas the um we see the earth coming out of their, her slumber and bringing into the spring and she's like ah oh, stretching and she's awakening right so we embody her and we bring her in during this huge springtime festival which is in bulk okay and that is around February 2nd. It's huge, huge celebration for us pagans. Um, like I said earlier, she is the goddess of flame and well water. So you will see her associated with flames. And you will see her associated with water or wells or sacred springs. Because that is one of her symbols. And we'll talk more about how that happened. Let me check up on comments. 
um, and get a sip. Cheers. Mm. But Tanya, I can relate. No rules, make your own. I know, right, Pamela? And get, hey, Gamma, how are you? Thank you for um, hanging out with us. So let's talk a little bit about who she's inspiring or who should work with her. Everybody can work with Bridget. She is very gentle, nurturing, caring type of goddess. She's not hard to work with. She's not hard to invoke. You don't have to do certain, certain steps and offerings to her. She's very laid back. She's very sweet. She's very nice and gentle. It almost reminds me of a goddess who is just wants to get the fire underneath you, but in a gentle way, not like, you know, um, Latanya talked about Callie, where she just comes in and uh, changes everything like the tower card. She gently nudges you to change. Okay. Um, she sparks in for, um, inspiration for creativity. She's the goddess for poets, musicians, and singers. She loves music. So a lot of times you'll see her with a harp. Storytellers, scholars, and teachers, artists, tradesmen, um, metalsmiths. That's why you see her with the flame. And she's a transformational goddess, just like fire transforms metal, right, into molding it into how you want your life to be. She is great if you to work with if you're a healer and an herbalist, magical workers, and seers and prophets. So she works with a lot of um, different aspects and different type of um, people. Now, she is also known as a fertility god because you will see her, especially when you come back to Imbolc, which is February 2nd, which is you, if you resonate with the wheel of the year, she is associated with the fertility of the land because during Imbo, what we talked about is the earth is starting to awaken, starting to grow, is starting to come out of um, the, the frost. So that's when you'll see the first very shoots of flowers and grass and greenery. She is associated with the land and livestock and sheep and women. And we'll talk about more about the women she is said to be present at every birth because she is very much a protector of children. Blesses um, midwives for their work. So if you are a midwife and you do home, home birthings, I suggest you get a, um, and I'll talk, I'll show you what I have. I can show you now. Well, no, I'll show you later because I have a whole bunch of stuff I got to show you all. <laughs> get a little metal of Bridget and keep it in your pocket, keep it around you or gift it to the women who are bearing children, um, especially infants. So um, she is known as also the protector of women and children, which is why we associate her with being a warrior goddess, because she fiercely protects her children, which we are her children. And fiercely, she's almost like a mama bear, kind of like she fiercely protects women and children. So that is why she is known in some circles as a warrior goddess. Yeah, Pamela sounds like uh, my kind of goddess. <laughs> she is awesome to work with. And Ellen says, I work with her often when I'm working with herbs and making teas. Yes, Ellen is our um, magnificent healer through herbs and tinctures and um, teas. So, no, you're good. You're good. Yay. So, um, let's talk more about her. Now, let's talk about a little bit about a little different about her name and how to pronounce it. Now, for me, and, you know, it's it, you're going to start off with the Gaelic, but I don't speak Gaelic. So, we're going to talk about how most commonly you pronounce her name. It's Bridget. Okay. That's how we speak it now in common English is Bridget. But you can pronounce it as Brita. However, it's usually Bridget, especially in Wiccan circles. Um, other names are Breed, B-R-I-D, Bride, B-R-I-D-E. Oh, I'm going to get this one. Breed, B-R-I-D-E, B-R-I-D-H-E, <laughs> that's Gaelic. 
Britannia, Bridget, Bridget, or Bridget, and these are all spelled a little bit different. They will have a G or a D or an H somewhere in their name. But for all of mostly of, because um, I don't speak Gaelic, it's gonna, I'm gonna pronounce it Bridget because everybody knows how to say the word Bridget. So if you say, oh yeah, I'm working with the goddess Bridget, they're gonna be, oh yeah, I know who that is. Or you, if you say, I'm gonna work with the goddess Bree, they're gonna be like, who's that? I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. And you say, oh, it's Bridget. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, I know her. Yeah, so most commonly if you say Bridget, people will know who you're speaking of. Now, you will see her, and I've got some cards too, depicted with a green cloak and as you can see i am dressed in bridget colors today i'm dressed in green and the reason why she uses or wears a green cloak is to protect everybody who is under that cloak so she will bring in anybody who needs healing and she will open up her cloak to children to infants to people who need healing people who need blessings people who need strength and you just gather under her cloak and she will use her cloak to surround you like a blanket okay and the green color stands for nurturing stands for growth standing stands for being grounded okay in your work um and nourishment so that's why she will see her with green and i will show you other pictures as we move along let's see um now, let's talk a little bit about history of her, too. Um, Bridget is the daughter of, we're going to talk about her lineage a little bit. So Bridget is the daughter of the earth god Dogda. She was born at sunrise and was elevated into the sky with rays of light radiating from her head. So sometimes you'll see rays of light coming out from her head, which represents her birth. Now, she was nourished as a child on the sacred milk of the cow and that is one of her symbols and we'll talk about that later um, and it is said that wherever she walks you know wherever her cloak or um, touches the ground or where she walks she will leave a flow or a trail of flowers and shamrocks in springtime after her footsteps so she has, leaves a whole trail of flowers um, it is said that she has an apple orchard in the other world, across the veil, right, on the other plane. And her sacred bees travel back and forth, carrying the magical nectar to the earth. Bees are very much associated with Bridget. So it is very special when you see a, a bee that you acknowledge her and you thank her for sending her bees to nourish and nurture the earth so that it can grow and um, bring fruits and vegetables and growth and fertility, right? Because she is a fertility goddess. Um, she is very much associated with stones and monuments. It is also thought that there are bride stones in the monument of Stonehenge. The little bride stones all around there. So that's pretty cool. Interesting. I've been to Stonehenge before and it's a magical, wonderful place. Now, so let's talk a little bit. Let me catch up on comments. Does anybody have any comments? If you guys are enjoying this, please let me know. Please give me a couple of thumbs up if you guys are enjoying it. So let's talk about a little bit about what happened to her. Okay. And her story about how she ended up being Christian because she is now a Christian saint. So let's talk about how that happened in Ireland back in the day, right? <laughs> Bridget was a primary pagan goddess. She was Christianized in the fifth century. And this is her story of what happened to her. Um, her wells and her fires are in Kildare, or Kildare, Ireland, sorry, Kildare, K-I-L-D-A-R-E, Ireland, and that's where her, uh, her sacred wells and her flames are located. Her internal flame were, was tended by many, many people, thousands of people would come in 
and worship her at her sacred well. Um, she had 19 priestesses that were in charge of keeping that flame going um, eternally for all the time. They would take turns 24 hours tending that flame so it didn't go out. And only women were allowed to enter her sacred space of the flame and of the healing wells. So that's why it's important that you work with her if you want to bring you female energy. That's why she is mostly associated with women because she only allowed women into her sacred space, which as it should be. As I mean, you should be aware of who you're letting in sacred space. You just can't let anybody in sacred space. So she is very much associated with women and healing. Um, this continued until around 1220 CE when a bishop came in and was like, oh, no, how come men aren't allowed? We want men to come in. Why is it women only? Oh, no, we're going to change that. So he ordered the flame to be extinguished. And so that is when it was extinguished. But it was relit in the 1500s with the resurrection, so-called resurrection. That's funny I said that. <laughs> no pun intended, right? Resurrection of paganism and reverence for the goddess, Bridget. Her holy flame, it was relit in 1993 by the Daughters of the Flame. And now it still burns eternally. What's interesting that when I was researching her back in the day, she, it is a story that is said because she is so associated with midwives that she was a stepmother or, or, or something to Jesus. She was the midwife to St. Mary and she was there when Jesus was born and she was a pivotal person when it came to the birthing of Jesus. So that is a hidden story. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but that is just a story that is out there. So it'd be interesting to see if anybody could research that. Um, so as a pagan goddess, we talked about her being very inspirational for people who need deep wisdom, divination, healing, and midwifery, peace, abundance, and working with harmony in their home and in their earth. Creative expression is huge with her. Um, love and compassion and the power of women. Now, she's a triple goddess, right? Earlier we talked about Maiden Mother Crone. But in the ancient Celtics, she was triple goddess, but divided into the different influences. So she was the fire of the forge, which is the goddess of arts and handcrafts. She was the fire of hearth which is the goddess of home life, childbearing, fertility, animal husbandry, which is she's associated with sheep, farming, herb crafting, and healing. And then the third aspect is the fire of inspiration. We talked about poetry, prophecy, song, creative energy, storytelling, music, education. So that used to be the aspect of her back in the ancient Celts. Fire of forge, fire of hearth, fire of inspiration. Super, super cool. So before we get into looking at the symbols, let me look, show you some things that I have. Let me catch up on comments. Um, Pamela was absolutely it's your sacred space. So you just can't let anybody off the streets just like, come on in the sacred space. Hey, you know. Um, so you just gotta be aware of your surroundings and who you let in. Um, Gemma is a yes, I know that she was a foster mother of Jesus. Yes, yes. I've heard that story many, many times, whether, you know, you can prove it or not. I'm not sure, but I just love that story. Love that story. And that was part of the, the piece I was missing in Christianity because they didn't tell us all these hidden stories of all these powerful women. And that's what I was seeking. So that is why. It's important to do your research on your own. And Pamela says, oh, maybe that's why I saw Daughters of 
I don't know when that was. When I was watching a documentary you see about the states of Ireland. Yeah, probably. So let's look at, before we get into her symbols and associations, um, this is going a little bit longer, but you know, hey, <laughs> it's Bridget. We can't you know, say no. I think I'm the last one on the group anyway, so we'll just catch on. We'll just hang out, right? So this is the picture of Bridget. And this is standing for what you believe is right. So see her sacred flame she's holding in her water. And this is in the background is her um, Bridget's cross made out of um, wheat or water reeds. And then you will see this one depicted with her working her magic in her cauldron because her symbol is cauldron, which is a sacred womb for women. And in this one, it's about alchemy. It's about flow. It's about nurturing. It's about power and compassion at the same time. And with this one, if I can get to focus, there you go. You will see her red flaming hair and her cloak and then her um, rigid cross um, pin. She's working her magic in her cauldron. So let's talk about, now this is my goddess Bridget pagan prayer that I have on all that I use during in bulk. Okay. It has all the colors associated with her. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's got Celtic stuff on it, flowers, and then the goddess, and then the Celtic on the bottom. So whenever I work with her, I use that rosary. Okay. Um, now, this is, remember we talked about how she was Christianized because she was so much a part of the pagan world. When she was Christianized, they made her a saint. They were like, all right. The pagans were like, if you don't, you need to let us worship um, Goddess Bridget, or she can just forget it. You can just kill us all. And they're like, all right, so how are we going to incorporate it? They're like, all right, let's compromise. Let's compromise. Let's, let's saint her and make her a saint and bring her into Christianity as a saint. Therefore, you can still worship her as a pagan goddess, but we can still worship her as a Christian type of saint. And they're like, okay, cool. Hell, thank you for doing that. And all the Christians were like, yeah, da, 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 you know, whatever. They were happy. So this that's why it is so important that you realize if you go to a, a Catholic store or, you know, they usually have them in the um, Catholic churches, some kind of gift shop, you can get statues and um, of Bridget. And you can get little medals of Bridget. So she was incorporated into Christianity. And I'm trying to see if I can get this focus for you. So when I went to the Catholic store, I got a little, there she is, a little Bridget charm. There she is. So look for her in Catholic um, gift stores. Now, this is her actual rosary that I got at the Catholic store, too. Even though that I left Christianity a long time ago, I still love my rosaries. And this is one that I use with her when I do any kind of work. So she has a Celtic cross, and then the beads are all, um, what are those called? Shamrocks, and the color is green. And this is associated with her that I use when I'm doing any goddess work with her. So, um, let's see. Hey, Pamela says that the women were wearing t-shirts that said daughters of something. Maybe it was daughters of um, Danu or daughters of Twatha Day. It was something the 80s IRS, I'm not sure. And Latania said how Christian faith didn't and still don't in many ways acknowledge women. Yes. Unfortunately, it's sad. Mother Maiden, um, Mother Maiden, <laughs> um, the goddess Mary is now, um, it's a new movement. Well, it's probably not new, but it's a movement to, um, to work with her as a goddess. So if you're interested in working with 
um, her. She's a wonderful goddess. He <laughs> can leave out a square of green material in Bulgaria. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Like I love the charm. So let's talk a little bit about the symbols and how you can bring in the goddess energy. Okay. And um, her symbols are fire and water. Wells and spring, sun, light and flower are going to run. Wow, well, light and sun. We're going to run through these really, really fast because we want to start on the meditation. I do not want to leave you guys without this meditation. Um, but all of this or a lot of this is in this handout that I'm giving you for the free, on the free, right? I need to quit doing this. <laughs> On the free, so make sure you get that downloaded. To, um, teaches you how to bring Bridget in to your um, everyday witchcraft life. So super cool stuff. Um, so fire and water, wells, springs, flames, sparks, um, arrows is a sign of solar rays. She, she is associated sometimes with the sun because she was born on sunrise, so she can be associated with the sun. Bridget cross, which is what I just showed you, um, usually made out of wheat or out of um, water reed. Um, her activities are poetry, music, songs, storytelling, arts, crafts, learning and teaching, um, herb crafting, midwifing, beekeeping is huge. So if any of you guys want to work with the goddess, start bringing in your bees and working with the bees and divination and prophecy and home tending, hearth, right? So if you want to bring in animals that are associated with her, it's going to be always bees, always sheep or lambs, um, dairy cows and owls and swans and gooses. So your plants are going to be shamrocks, of course, heather, grains, wisteria, blackberry, um, meadow flowers, spring flowers, hawthorn, any of those. Now you can make an elixir like an oil or um, an anointing oil out of any of those scents, out of those essential oils, and make your own goddess oil, Bridget goddess oil, or goddess Bridget incense if you have the herbs, dried herbs to do that. Now as far as the metals, you want to bring in gold, brass, copper, silver, crystals, or red or blue stones, okay? And your colors are going to be white, yellow, red, dark blue, or green usually your springtime colors. And your other symbols are going to be the Bridget Cross, any Celtic cross, cauldron, green cloak, harps, bells, thresholds or entryways. Um, and the number 19, because we talked about how she had 19 priestesses that tended her flame. So the number 19 is her sacred number. So if you're working with Bridget and you want to use any numerology, any magical sigils, put in the number 19 in any of your magical workings with her. And she's also associated with corn dollies and springtime. Okay? So anybody have any questions before we start the meditation? Um, one of the things you can do is you can use any of these symbols to bring her in to your home. Use the colors, use the candle colors, make some anointing oils, do herb crafting, work with bees, wear the colors, get a Bridget cross, go find um, some songs that you want to sing, or if you want to color a picture of Bridget. She loves any of this. Um, spend time with your children and honoring her and bringing the children into sacred space. Um, healing is good. Anything that moon water is great to work with. It doesn't have to be hard to work with her. So even if you wear the color green, you're like, I'm invoking the goddess Bridget today. That's all you have to do. Or a yellow, or I'm picking a bouquet of flowers today to work with the goddess Bridget. You don't have to do everything elaborate. Those are just some simple ways. Play Celtic music. She loves music. Bring in simple things like that. Light a fire in your fireplace if it's cold enough, or if you have a cauldron, um, light a flame in your cauldron. Super, super easy to work with her. Um, let's see. Let's see. Jessica said, yes, I remember being interested in her hearth goddess qualities growing up. She is a wonderful goddess to work with hearth and home. So um, let's start our goddess meditation. Let me 
see how we are doing in the comments before I take you on the goddess walk. So before we get started, I want you guys to get in a comfortable space. I'm going to be sitting back a little bit. Um, and I want you to sit comfortably, however comfortable is to you. If you need to get a drink, go get a drink. I'm going to play some meditation music. I want you to close your eyes. If you feel you need to go get a candle, go get a candle. Light your candle. I'm going to light our candle, our cauldron, our flame. So we are in sacred space together. And this is going to be a time of reflection and receiving healing from the goddess Bridget as I take you along the journey of walking with the goddess Bridget. So I want you to clear your mind and let's get started. Let me go ahead and light our sacred flame. So we are all connected together with Bridget. Okay, is everybody in a comfortable position? Okay. I want you to relax and close your eyes. Let your hands fall by your side or in your lap into the receiving position. Let the stress and the strains of the day just drain away out through your shoulders, through your fingertips, down through your feet and into the ground. And as your eyes are closed, I want you to take a deep breath and exhale your stress. Drop your shoulders. Stretch out your neck. And I want you to really take a couple deep breaths and exhale as we begin to walk with the goddess. Really quiet your mind, quiet your surroundings. You find yourself sitting in a meadow full of wildflowers, poppies, cornflowers, flax, and meadow sweets. Their scent filling the air around you. It's intoxicating to you, the sweet smell of spring. You feel the cool, damp earth beneath you and the warm breeze blowing over your skin. As you look to your left, you see a small pathway. Just a small little sheep track but you notice it leads off towards the east and you find yourself getting up and wanting to follow it. Far in the distance, you see a patch of woods and you start walking towards it. It's a place of sunlight and shade, patches of grass, sweet, piping and chirping of birds, the rustle of small mammals and birds buzzing or bees buzzing around, insects and lots of woodland creatures. The path leads you inside the woods. It is a well-worn path that many have walked before you. You quickly see that it is an ancient oak wood forest. The forest is full of strong and grandfatherly like oaks. Their trunks are sturdy and steadfast, holding up their forked and leafy branches 
which reach high into the sky. You are conscious of their roots, which run deep into Mother Earth. They reach far down into the ground, further than you can even imagine, drawing nourishment and wisdom from Mamgaya. As you walk further into the woods, the trees become more and they become denser and the intensity of their branches begin to block out the sunlight. It becomes quieter. You hear nothing but your own footsteps crunching on the forest floor. The dark increases and your heart beats faster. You don't know where you are or where you are going, but you know you must follow. You are drawn deep inwards into the forest. You feel your way by touch, not by sight. Suddenly, you smell the friendly smoke of a wood fire and the same time the darkness begins to recede and patches of sky appear between the branches above. The trees become thinner and you find yourself on the other side of the woods facing a small group of round huts built of low stone walls with thatched roofs. As you approach the cozy camp, three women appear, smiling and welcoming you, beckoning you to come hang out as they guide you beyond the huts to a rustic fence made of twigs. The fence surrounds a large fire. Even from the distance, you can see it burning with a fierce intensity. The women whisper to you, this is Bridget's fire. This is Bridget's sacred fire. Do you wish to approach the sacred fire? If you answer yes to the women, please allow them to take you inside the fence where more women are tending the fire. They lead you to it and then melt away into the background, leaving you alone with the sacred flame. As you stare at the wall of flame, feeling its power and vitality, you become aware of the presence of the goddess Bridget, the form in which she chooses to appear to you will be different for each of you. Invite you to ask how she is presenting your, herself to you. How does she seem to you? And I want you to remember the form that she has taken. As you stand there, you feel yourself being laid bare as she looks at you, her gaze penetrating to your very essence. After what seems like a lifetime, she gives you a gift. It may be an object or a word or a song or a picture. This gift is a symbol of what you need in your life at this moment. And I want you to take a couple of seconds and receive her gift. Take a couple deep breaths as you receive. You 
You have never received a beautiful gift like this before. The gift is like a flash of light and the vision fades. You suddenly find yourself back at the edge of the woods. The twig fence and the little huts behind you. The three women are with you and they guide you back to the edge of the woods. They take you to a small spring bubbling up from the ground and taking up a simple wooden bowl that lies beside it on a rock. They fill it with the healing water and give it to you to drink. The water takes away the penetrating heat of fire. It quenches your, quenches your thirst and brings you healing from within. Then you retrace your steps through the woods, guided this time by the inner light that seems mysteriously to radiate from the fire you left behind in the fence. Soon you reach the other side of the woods and follow the path back to the meadow, back to where you came from. Again, you smell the scent of flowers and you hear the murmuring of the bees and the insects and the rustling of the woodland creatures. You become aware of what Bridget has given you and the significance of that gift. And when you feel ready, I want you to leave the meadow Come back to your center, to your heart chakra, into the present moment, and then open your eyes when you feel you are ready. Welcome back, my sisters. How is everyone? Take a couple deep breaths. Come back to present. Wiggle your fingers. Stretch out your head. Move your hips around if you need to. Swirl your ankles. Get all that flood blowing, the blood flowing back into the present moment. Into the sacred flame. So how is everybody feeling? I hope you enjoyed the walk with the goddess Bridget. So in order to be entered into my free gift, I want you to share with the group, if you feel compelled to share, what gift Bridget has given to you. And I want you to type that in the comments. Or if you don't wanna share, very private to you. This is a private moment between you and goddess and some people don't feel like they want to share. Make sure you instant, um, instant message, PM me your answer so you can win, be entered to win the 30 minute session with me. Um, I get tingly when I work with the goddess and I walk with the goddess. So I wanted to share that moment with you, how wonderful it is to work with her. And I hope it's, we only got like five minutes left. So I hope you really enjoyed working with the goddess Bridget and how wonderful and healing and nurturing she can be to work with. Does anybody have any questions? Ah, oh, Pamela had creativity in Cauldron's Fire. Clover and a coin. Ah, oh, what wonderful gifts she has given to you. Creativity. I love cauldrons. Well, you know, we are, our cauldrons are our creative center, right? That's where everything is birthed from, is the female womb. So I'm not surprised that she did pair creativity in cauldrons with that. 
because that's where we work our magic and create earth, earth, create, you know, nurturing from our wounds. That is our creator, creative center. Pamela said power. Ah, oh, again, I was like, I love that. If you enjoyed this, please give me some hearts up. Please give me some, some thumbs up. Let me know that you guys enjoyed this. If you are watching the replay, hit hashtag replay. Make sure you share in the um, live feed or private message me if you don't feel like sharing. Your gift that Goddess Bridget has given you. And Leona says, a red drawstring bag made of softest, finest fabrics from nature filled with old gold coins. Oh, oh, what a wonderful gift. I love that. So all of my links to find me and to work with me, I have a couple of one-on-one -on -one spots open available if you want to work with me. So all my links are above. I hope you enjoyed this. I am enjoying the summit of magic and thank you again for joining me in sacred space and walking with the goddess bridget and thank you again christina for opening up the group to us so if you have any questions about anything that has come up for you because this is what we call women's work this is deep stuff so some stuff may come up so let me know okay and thank you again for spending time in sacred space with me and we will see you in the last couple of days in the Summer of Magic Summit. All right, my sisters, which on. Um, love you much. Bye.